Good afternoon, boys and girls. My name is Miss Melissa, and I am your host for today. This is your teacher, Miss Amy Baker. Today, we will learn all about fairy tales and how to distinguish fantasy from realistic fiction. By the end of today's lesson, we will be able to determine the central message or the moral of the story. We will describe how the fisherman feels about asking for more and more and more wishes and how the flounder feels about grant granting each wish. We will identify the characteristics of fairy tales using literary language and explain the characteristics as they apply to the fairy tale. We will also be able to determine the meaning of some new words, vocabulary words, as well as being able to distinguish fantasy or make-believe from realistic text. We know that fairy tales are stories that feature members of a royal family, such as a prince or a princess or a king or a queen. And these characters sometimes have special powers or magic. Many of the things that happen in fairy tales are fantasy and cannot happen in real life. In other words, fairy tales are fiction. Raise your hand if you enjoy listening to fairy tales. Wow, lots of you love them. Can you recall a fairy tale that begins with once upon a time? Do you know what kind of endings fairy tales usually have? Are they happy or sad? Can you name any fairy tales that have royal characters or characters with magical powers? Over the next several days, we will share some of our favorite fairy tales with you. So make sure that you join us each day. Today, we are going to hear a fairy tale called The Fisherman and His Wife. This story was originally retold by two brothers in Germany known as the Brothers Grimm. Germany is far away from where we live in Mississippi. If you look at my globe, you can see that here we are at the bottom of the United States and the Brothers Grimm were all the way across to Germany in Europe. So it's a long, long way from where we are. Let's get started today by discussing the meaning of some important vocabulary words that we will hear in this fairy tale. I'm going to use my fish friend to help point at the words. The very first word is displeases. Say displeases. Displeases. Displeases means to feel unhappy or bothered about something. Let's use our body to tell if something displeases you. Miss Melissa, would you show us what displeases looks like? Okay, boys and girls, now it's your turn. Can you show us what displeases looks like? Ready? Terrific, great job. In a sentence, if we use the word displeases, it might say, it displeases the baseball players when their game is canceled due to rain. Our new word is displeases. Let's go on to the second word. Our second word is enchanted. Say enchanted. Enchanted. Enchanted means as if under a magic spell. Miss Melissa, can you show us what enchanted might look like? Awesome. Boys and girls, it's your turn. Show us enchanted. Terrific, you did it. In a sentence, enchanted might be used as, as this. 
The jewel trees had magical powers. Our word is enchanted. And our last vocabulary word that we're going to look for in our story is the word hesitated. Say hesitated. Hesitated. Hesitated means to stop briefly before doing something. Miss Melissa, can you show us hesitated? Yes. Boys and girls, it's your turn. Show me hesitated. Great job. In a sentence, hesitated might be the boy hesitated before he petted his dog. Our new word is hesitated. Once more, displeases means to feel unhappy or bothered about something. Enchanted means as if under a magic spell. And hesitated means to stop briefly before doing something. Now, boys and girls, what do you see in this picture? Yes, this is a fish, but this particular fish is called a flounder. This is a flat fish that hides itself under the surface of the sand and waits for its prey or the animals that it eats. Now, if I can have your attention, let's take a quick look at our KWL chart. The K means what I know. The W means what I want to know. And the L means <clears throat> what we will learn from this story. Now let's talk about what we already know about fairy tales. We know that they are make-believe. We know that some fairy tales begin with once or once upon a time. And we know that fairy tale characters can be a king, a queen, or a prince or princess. Miss Melissa and I have some questions about the story, things that we want to know. Will the characters have magical powers? Will they be enchanted? And do fairy tales really teach us a lesson, a life lesson, or a moral? Those are the things that we'll think about as we read, and when we're finished, we will go back to what we have learned. Now, remember, as we read, that fairy tales often feature a royal character or someone with magical powers, and that fairy tales are make-believe. I want you to take just a moment and think about predictions and what might happen in the story. Who might have the magical powers and whether there will be a royal character also want you to listen for our new vocabulary words. Hesitated, enchanted, and displeases as we read. Listen very carefully and you will find out if your predictions are correct. Are you ready? So excited, Miss Melissa, to find out about the fisherman and his wife. Turn the thing on. Once there was a fisherman who lived in a little old rundown hut by the sea. Every day the fisherman went down to the sea to fish. One day, as the fisherman sat looking into the clear, shining water, he felt a strong tug on his line. He pulled and pulled with all his might until at last out flopped a large golden flounder. Then, all of a sudden, the fish spoke. Please let me go, said the fish. I am not an ordinary fish. I am an enchanted prince. 
Put me back in the water and let me live. Swim away, said the fisherman. I would not eat a fish that can talk. At the end of the day, the fisherman went back to his wife in the little old rundown hut. Didn't you catch anything today, she asked. No, said the fisherman. I did catch one fish, but he told me he was an enchanted prince and asked me to throw him back, so I did. You fool, said the wife. That was a magic fish. You should have asked him for something. Like what, said the fisherman. Go back and ask him to change this dinky hut into a charming cottage. The fisherman did not want to go, but he did not want to argue with his wife either. So he made his way back to the sea. When he arrived, the water was no longer clear and shining. It was dull and greenish. The fisherman called, Hear me, please, O oh magic fish. My wife has sent me with a wish. The fish swam up to the surface and asked, What does she want? She says she wants to live in a charming cottage, said the fisherman. Go home, said the fish. She has her cottage. The fisherman went home. Sure enough, there was his wife standing in the doorway of a charming cottage. The cottage had a little front yard with a garden and some chickens and a goose pecking at the ground. Inside there was a living room, a kitchen, a dining room, and a bedroom. Wonderful, said the fisherman. This is sure to make you very happy. The fisherman's wife was happy for about a week. Then she said, husband, I am tired of this tiny little cottage. I want to live in a big stone castle. Go and ask the fish to give us a castle. But why, said the fisherman, he has just given us his cottage. If I go back again so soon, he may be angry with me. Go and ask, said the wife. The fisherman shook his head and mumbled to himself, it's not right, but he did as he was told. When he reached the sea, the water had turned from dull green to dark purple and gray. The fisherman called, Hear me, please, O oh magic fish. My wife has sent me with a wish. When the fisherman swam up, when the fish swam up, the fisherman said, My wife wishes to live in a big stone castle. Go home, said the fish. You will find her in a castle. When the fisherman got back, he could hardly believe his eyes. The charming cottage had been replaced by a large stone castle. Now, indeed, you will be content, said the fisherman to his wife. And she was until the next morning. As the sun rose, the fisherman's wife poked her husband in his side and said, Husband, get up. Go to the fish at once and tell him that I wish to be queen of all the land. Heavens, cried the fisherman, I can't ask for that. Go and ask him, said his wife. Now, boys and girls, let's take a moment to think about what we have read so far. Make sure that you think of your answers in complete sentences and restate the question in your response. Ready? What characters have we met so far in this fairy tale? I have met the fisherman, the flounder, and the wife. Which one of the characters is enchanted? The fish was the enchanted character in the fairy tale. How do you think the wife knows that the fish is enchanted? The wife knows that the fish is enchanted because the fish is talking. 
And what three wishes has the wife made so far? She wished for a cottage and a castle. And one more, she wanted to be queen. Yes. Now, we will continue the story. Are you ready? Here we go. The dejected fisherman walked to the sea. The water was black. It bubbled and gave off a foul smell. The fisherman hesitated and then called, Hear me please, O oh magic fish. My wife has sent me with a wish. The fish swam up and asked, Now what does she want? With his head hung low, the fisherman said, My wife wishes to be queen of all the land. Go home, said the fish. She is already queen. The fisherman went home and found that the castle had grown even larger. It had tall stone turrets on each corner and a crimson flag flapping in the wind. Two sentries in suits of armor stood at the door. They escorted the fisherman inside where he found his wife sitting on a high throne studded with diamonds. She wore a long silk dress and a golden crown. In her hand she held a scepter studded with rubies and on one side of her stood barons, dukes, and duchesses. On the other side stood a line of ladies-in-waiting, each one shorter than the one before. So, the fisherman said, now you are queen. Indeed, said his wife haughtily. Well then, said the fisherman, I suppose there is nothing more to wish for. But that very evening, as the sun went down and the moon began to rise in the sky, the fisherman's wife sent for her husband. Husband, she bellowed, it displeases me that the sun and the moon will not rise and set at my command. Go to the fish and tell him I must have the power to make the sun and the moon rise and set whenever I choose. See that it is done immediately. The fisherman walked back to the sea. He felt sick all over. His knees knocked together nervously. And at the seaside, the thunder roared and lightning flashed. Huge dark waves crashed on the shore. The fisherman had to shout, Hear me please, O oh magic fish. My wife has sent me with a wish. The fish swam up and asked, what does she want? The fisherman replied, My wife wants the power to make the sun and the moon rise and set whenever she chooses. The fish only said, Go home. And so he did. There he found his wife sitting in the old rundown hut, and there they lived to this very day. Boys and girls, now let's see what you remember about the fairy tale. I want you to answer in complete sentences. Are you ready? You'll have a little think time and then Miss Melissa will help you. Were your predictions about the character's magic powers correct? Great job, some of you predicted the same thing I did. I predicted that the fish would have the magic powers. And he did. The fisherman caught a flounder, but then he let him go. Who did the flounder say he was? Great job. He did say that he was an enchanted prince that was under a magic spell. What kinds of things does the wife ask the flounder for? Y'all paid very close attention. Awesome. Yes, she asked for a cottage, a stone castle, to be queen, and then she wanted to command the sun when to rise and set. Awesome job. Think really hard for this one. What happens to the water, to the sea, every time the fisherman goes back to ask for his wife's wish? 
That is correct. Every time that the fishermen went back, the water got darker and more stirred up. What happened when the wife said, I command the sun to rise and set when I say, when she asked for that wish to be granted. Great job, boys and girls, that is correct. He took everything that she had wished for and left her back with her rundown hut that she lived in. How do you know that this is a fairy tale? Awesome job, boys and girls. We know that this is a fairy tale because this is a make-believe story. It begins with once or once upon a time, the characters even have magical powers. Wow. That's how we know that it is a fairy tale. We're going to do an activity now, and so you need to have a partner at home. You can ask your mom or dad or a friend that might be over or your brother or sister, and it's called Think, Pair, Share. I'm going to ask a question, and then I'll give you a second to think, about the question and then I'll ask you to turn to your partner and share your answer. Ready? Do you think that there is a lesson or a moral to be learned from this story? And if you think that, what do you think it is? Think, look at your partner and share. Great job, boys and girls. You are correct. We all need to learn to be thankful for the things that we have and not be greedy as the wife in the story was. Thank you for joining us today. All rights and credits from this lesson belong to Core Knowledge Language Arts. We would like to thank you, thank them for publicly sharing these materials with us today. Before we leave, we'd like you to look one more time at our KWL chart. And we're going to do some things that we have learned, things we learned from the story. That there really is a lesson to be learned. We learned not to be greedy like the wife and keep asking questions and wanting our wishes fulfilled. And that in a fairy tale, some of the characters do have magical powers. Join us again tomorrow for the second part of The Fisherman and His Wife. Until then, happy reading. Share the story with your friends and family and see if you can use the new vocabulary words that we learned today. Displeases, enchanted, and hesitated. You were great guests today, and we were excited to share this story with you. Make sure that you do that today with someone new. Bye, boys and girls.